This is the circle pouch I'm going to show you how to make now. This is so quick and so simple, but you can use this for so many different things. So you can hang them up. So if you're thinking about um, Christmas decorations, advent calendars, or even storage pouches, this is ideal. Or instead of having the loop at the top, as I have here, you could put it on the end of the zip here. So you've got a wristlet, which would make a really nice uh, little evening bag. So it's all fully lined. It's only using four circles of fabric and it's very very easy to make those circles can be any size you like so if you wanted to make a bigger one or lots of smaller ones then that's entirely up to you but it's so quick and it's so easy and so much fun i think you're going to be making lots of them so let's get sewing so I've, i'm using an eight inch or 20 centimeter plate as my template so that's going to be around about the size of my bag then i've got two pieces of fabric for the outside and two pieces of fabric for the lining and I've got some H640 fusible fleece, a zip and that's my fabric for the tab which is seven inches by three inches. I'll put all of these measurements on the description underneath the video so you don't have to take much notice of what I'm doing here right now. Um, so I'm going to have the red side of my bag um, of my fabric as the outside and the lining is the start. If you wanted to use plain lining, that's fine. I was asked to use a patterned lining so that people could see which way around the lining goes when it's when it's popped in. So the first thing we're going to do is to draw around my plate onto the wrong side of one of these pieces of fabric. So let's just line them all up together. I am actually going to press that first because that's a little bit creased and I don't like working with with creased fabric you don't get an accurate cut if your fabric's creased necessarily so let's just press out those creases that makes it easier to work with okay Now it doesn't matter what kind of marker pen you're going to use. I happen to be using a heat erasable pen, but it could be a biro because this is within the seam allowance, so you're not going to see it. So let's draw a circle all the way around the plate. And then we'll cut out the shape. I'm going to cut through all four pieces at the same time. So I've got the two outer pieces and two lining pieces. And then with the outer pieces, I'm going to iron my H640 onto the wrong side. It doesn't have to be H640. This is what I, I happen to have available. Um, this is a Valiseline product that you may or may not have seen before. It is available on the website. Um, I think you will need some kind of interfacing in there to give it a little bit of sturdiness. Otherwise, you're just going to have a floppy fabric bowl uh, bag. So just interfacing, a medium weight interfacing, a firm interfacing, the fusible fleeces, even wadding or batting on the wrong side. It doesn't matter as long as there's just something to give that a little bit of stability. And then we'll cut all around those circles. And again, these can be any size that you like, teeny tiny ones, really large ones. That's entirely up to you. There we go. And the same on the, oh, let me iron up to the edges now. I, I don't take your iron over anything that's fusible like that because you just get glue onto your iron. So I tend to hold mine in place in the center and then go out towards the edges when I've cut it out. And do read your manufacturer's instructions. Some like steam, some don't. This is a Valiseline, it does like steam. I just don't happen to have any water in my iron at the moment, so I'm just going to use it without. And again, cut around the circle. And 
and iron up to the edge. Right, then we're going to take one of the outer pieces and one of the lining pieces and we're going to cut these in half. So I find the easiest way to be accurate with that is to fold it in half and press and then I'll cut along that line. And the same with this one. So just fold in half and press. If you wanted to measure that with your ruler and mat then of course that's absolutely fine. So let's cut straight down the centre here. and straight down the centre of the lining piece. And then my zip is going to go in between those two pieces. Obviously it's too long. I, I know I say this quite a lot, so sorry if I'm like a broken record. Um, I always buy long zips because they're not, I mean, they're pennies more expensive than a shorter zip, but you can always cut a longer zip down to size um, if it's nylon, not with a metal zip. Um, and it also means that I can sew all of this together without the, uh, the slider getting in the way. So let's pop this right sides together and bring over the machine. I'm not going to put the zipper foot on my machine. If you have um, a, a computerized sewing machine, if you use the stitch width, you can take the needle from one side to another. That is. And then if I move the needle right over to the left hand side, then when I sew the zip in, I don't have to put the zipper foot on because it's now positioned in the center of the zip tape. So line up the edges of the zip with the edge of the fabric and sew straight down. Then my lining needs to go on the opposite side. So face it down. Line up the fabric so they meet here. And I'm going to sew from this side because I can already see the stitch line and sew straight over the top of the line that I've just sewn. So that's on one side of the zip, like so. On the second half, take the second half of the fabric, right sides down, from the zip side and again line up the edges of the fabric and sew straight down the center of the zip tape again. Move all of this out of the way as you're sewing just so that you've got a clear stitch line and again straight down the center of the zip tape. And then the lining, on the opposite side of this lining, right side down, from the side that I've already sewn, match the ends of the fabric here and stitch those together. And just keep lining these up. I do find it easier not to use pins. If you wanted to pin or clip that in place before you sew, then that's absolutely fine. However you feel comfortable with it is important. So then I've got the outside and the lining pieces. So let's bring up the ironing board again. And I'm going to press these away from the zip. And then we'll top stitch either side of the zip. So just to hold all of that in place and to give it a nice neat look, I'm going to sew down here and down here. 
So I'll put the needle back to the central position. I can make it a slightly longer stitch because it's not a seam, it's a top stitch. And sew straight down. So actually I'm using a, a fabric that has um, a gold sheen to it. So if you had a metallic thread, that would look lovely. So I'm, I'm just using a neutral colour of grey on this one, but if you wanted to use a red or a gold and really make a feature of the top stitching, then that would be a lovely idea. So let's chop off the end of the zip. And I need to chop off the end of this zip, but make sure that this slider is out of the way. We don't want to chop that off. And then we can cut this. And then I'm just going to sew this end of the zip together because when we put the bag together, the zip's going to be open. So I'm just holding the ends of the zip together And I've just sewn them close together like that just to hold that in place while I put the rest of the bag together. So let's open up the zip. We're going to make the tab next. So I've kept mine quite short because mine's going to make a little loop on the top. If you wanted to make a loop on the end here, then you're going to make that longer. And the length of that is entirely up to you. So let's sew the long sides in half and then to the centre to the centre again so this is like a, a piece of bias binding and then we'll sew in half if you find your fabric isn't quite crisp enough then you can use something like a best press and just give that a quick spray so a little bit like starch starch would be fine and then you'll find it stays in place. And then here, I'm just going to top stitch down both sides. I'm just going to trim off the ends of these because sometimes they're not, not too neat. So just make that nice and neat at the ends like so. And then I'm going to find the centre top part of my bag by just folding this in half. And I'm just going to make a little snip at the top. And that's going to be the position of my strap, which I'm going to fold over like that. And that's going to go on the top here. And we'll just sew straight across the top here within the same allowance, so quite close to the edge, just to hold that in place. So facing downwards, right in the center of the top of my bag. Right, let's open the zip up. And then we're going to take the second side of the bag and pop this right sides together. So I'm going to put a few clips in here just to hold it all together. And then I'm going to sew a little section just around one side. And the reason for that is when I turn this the right side out, it's got a really nice smooth seam line. There's no hand sewing, there's no gaps to close that's all on the inside of the bag so let's just do this i'm just using the edge of my foot as a seam allowance so let's just put the stitches down so i've sewn a little line of stitches like this 
then I'm going to take my second lining piece and this is going to go facing down over the zip side. Like so. Now you see the part that we've already sewn here? I'm going to sew from this side all the way around to here and that's going to be my turning gap. So I'm lining up the edges of the stitches and just follow the circle. Again, I'm just using the edge of my foot as a seam allowance. We're going to trim this down in just a second anyway. but try and keep this a nice smooth line because this is the shape of your bag. So if you've got any pointy bits or wobbly stitches, that's going to be the shape. So it's important that you just try and keep this a nice smooth curve of stitches. Then when I get back to the point where I started, I'm just going to reverse stitch there. Take that out. And then I'm going to trim back into the seam. If you have pinking shears, then it's a nice idea to use them. You could cut little V-shapes into the seam to reduce the bulk. I don't really think it's necessary, to be honest. I think just trimming it back slightly is enough for a little bag like this. Then we need to find where the gap was that I left. Where's the gap? There we go. <laughs> that was difficult to see. And we'll turn this all through. Now, when you turn it through the first time, it'll still be inside out. But it'll make sense in just a minute. So let's pull the whole thing through. Apologies for the dog barking. I think we're having a delivery. So this is all again, it's on the inside of the bag. So this is why it's important that you left the zip open as you're turning it. And there's my turning gap. So what I'm going to do here is to take my needle and thread, which has just come undone. Bear with me a second while we do that back up again. So let's just take my needle and thread. Well, I'm not in the end of that. And let's sew this opening closed. So let's get into the seam. Try not to go all the way through to the front. So I'm folding the edges of the seam over and I'm just going to use an over edge stitch for this one. So I'm going to go into one seam and over to the other. This isn't going to be seen. As I said, nobody's going to turn the bag inside out to see what's going on in there, even if it was a, a, a gift. So the important thing is that you just don't have a gap there. So small stitches if you can. Just keep folding that edge in as you go. You can use a ladder stitch if you prefer and make those stitches completely invisible. So on something like this, I didn't, I didn't really see the importance, to be honest. And I'm just cashing the fabric, not going through to the outside, because I don't want to see these little stitches on the outside of the fabric. So the smaller stitches you use, the more invisible they're going to be. The smaller the opening you make, the less hand sewing you need to do. So yeah, I think that's a I think that's a neat enough finish for the lining of a little pouch like this. End of the thread. Lost my bin cushion. There you go. And then we'll turn this the right side out. So this is why we did that little row of stitches before. So there's a completely smooth, seamless seam all the way around. I think one final press. And 
and that's my bag finished and ready to fill. So again, you have a nice neat seam on the outside. On the inside, if you do look in there, it's a seamless seam as well. There's no raw edges on the inside of the pouch. And I will do another video for this, but it's the same kind of technique that you can use with any shape. So circles, very, very easy, but that could be a hexagon. It could be a square shape. And again, you could hang this up as it is. You could have it as wristlet, so you've got a little evening bag. And of course, you can embellish and embroider as much as you like with that as well. So I hope you've enjoyed your tutorial. I, I think you're going to be making lots of these, so enjoy making every one of them. And I shall see you again very soon. Thank you for watching.